I'm a cemetery operations coordinator, or you can just call me a cemetery manager. Part of my job is sitting down with guests and family members of the deceased to set up funerals, facilitate the sales of plots, etc. A 30-something-year-old man named Antonio, very spiritual man, once sat down with me to purchase a plot for his sick father who was in hospice care. Antonio was a Hispanic man with a very thick accent, and I saw in his eyes he was a very caring man. He showed me pictures of his father, who also looked like a very sweet man, much too young to be taken away from his family. But unfortunately, the man's time came that same week, and Antonio arranged for his father's funeral service at the cemetery. It was a very stormy day the day of the funeral, which is thought to be a sign of good luck. The funeral procession stopped in front of the front office building briefly. I stepped outside under the front awning of the building and saw Antonio in the car behind the hearse. We waved at each other. Due to the weather, I went back inside until the procession was ready to proceed to the burial site. I got in one of the cemetery pickup trucks and followed the procession to the final stop, where I would stand with my umbrella supervising, as part of my job is making sure funeral services go smoothly. After the funeral, I did some laps around the place in the truck just to survey the area as I did at least a couple times a day. I had a lot of paperwork to take care of, and on top of this, I had to close the cemetery that night. So a little later, I went back to my desk and took care of this. The cemetery closes at 5.30, so as soon as it started to get dark, I drove around the place one more time to ensure all visitors had left, then drove over to the front gate to shut it. It was a relatively warm early March. The days were still on the shorter side, so by closing time on a normal day, it would already be getting darker. But on this stormy ass day, it already felt like it was nighttime. I was driving back to my office when I thought I saw someone hurriedly walking down one of the lanes of tombstones before turning behind a hedge and disappearing out of sight. I beeped my horn so as to let them know the place was closed, but strangely enough, I didn't see them again. I grabbed my umbrella and ran out into the rain in that direction. I turned beyond the hedge he turned at and looked down this long row of tombstones on one side and hedges on the other. I didn't see anyone. I looked around in the rain for a solid 20 minutes, but eventually I had to give up. I drove back up to the office and browsed through the CCTV footage. None of it picked up on any unusual movement, even though it was a bit harder to see much because of the storm and it was also pitch black outside now. I tried to multitask, keeping an eye on the camera while finishing up some of my paperwork. When I heard the front door to the visitation room slam shut, I sprang up from my chair and yelled, hello? My first thought was that it was the same person I saw before. Maybe they got locked in the cemetery and were looking for assistance in leaving. I stepped out into the lobby, but no one was there. I looked around and again said, hello? Maybe the door slamming shut was them leaving. I started looking out all the windows and I stopped when at one of them, I saw someone on the other side looking back at me with a blank expression. I jumped back and screamed and they didn't flinch. I stepped closer and made a squinty-eyed, confused look when I realized I recognized this Hispanic older-looking man. In my head, it reminded me exactly of the pictures of Antonio's father he showed me. With my heart in my throat, I ran out the front door of the building and to the side where I saw the man, but he was gone. He wasn't booking it into the fields, he wasn't hiding in a bush nearby, he was gone. I looked around me as I stood in the rain getting soaked then ran back inside, packed up my things, locked up, and got in my car. I opened and closed the gate, once more locking it behind me, and drove home. When my wife asked me at home why I was being so quiet, I just told her, long day at work. To this day, I think I was just overworking myself, and my mind was playing tricks on me, but it still is genuinely disturbing to think about. My name is Jeremy. This was in the dead of October, chilly and windy. I live in a somewhat big town. It's very poor and old, early 18th century type buildings. A friend and I were bored one night and decided to go fuck around at 3am. I know that going out at 3am in a poor town isn't exactly smart, but we like to have our fun. We got bored of driving around blasting our music. We're both very big metalheads, and at that point we had our own band so we decided it would be interesting and cool to walk around a cemetery in the town. Behind the old town square, there's a massive cemetery. It's divided by two sides of a highway, both sides taking up about 20 acres of land. As I said, it's massive. 
we decided to check out the older part of the cemetery. This part is completely separated from the rest of the newer cemetery with an old iron fence and gate. We get to walking around and checking out the cemetery, trying to read the old moss-covered graves, taking pictures, being a little bit disrespectful, I know. But these were graves from at least a century ago, so there was no one living that would be upset by it, and I'm sure the people in the graves didn't mind too much. After about an hour of checking it out, we sit down next to a giant pecan tree in the middle of the old cemetery. That's when we hear this little girl laughing. Like, I mean it was really close to us. At first I assumed maybe it was a toy left on a child's grave or something like that. I'm not one to scare easily, so I just figured it's motion activated or something like that. We are not at all easy to scare, so we both sort of laugh, pointing out that it's creepy and just keep talking and enjoying the ambiance. Then, as in all stories like this, I get the feeling of something or someone watching me. Once again, I just figured that I was letting the entire thing get into my head. Then my friend says he thinks he sees someone in the shadows of a small wooded area right next to the cemetery, of which we were really close. At this point, we're both a little creeped out and decide to get up and leave. And that noise, the exact same noise, played again, and we hear leaves crunching underneath the feet of someone. That's when we booked it. We ran down the hill leading to the old part of the cemetery, down where my car was parked. I've never ran that fast in my life. It sounded like that laughing noise was following us at that point. We both sort of just went into full fight or flight mode at that point, going as fast as we could without thinking. The noises behind us stopped as we got to my car. I started my car and put it in drive, pulling out into the highway without looking. Luckily no one hit us. We get down the road to the only gas station that's open at this time of night to check in the back of my car. We had both been discussing how we were scared some shit had been done to it. We get around to check and immediately find the back door is open. I know for a fact neither of us ever opened it. There was no reason for us to open it. I look in the back seats, make sure nothing's there, get right back in the car and peel out. I'm still confused about what happened that night. I'm not sure if we both overreacted or what. All I know is that I still feel that weird feeling that something is behind you whenever I tell this story. When I was 19, my friend Sean, who was a big goofball, came over to chill in our basement as he often would during the summer. I remember he had a coke bottle in his hand and I was eating Wendy's when he said we should check out that creepy little cemetery across town. It was the most random idea ever, and I even told him that. Still, we had no school the next day, and I knew exactly which cemetery he was talking about. I don't know if one should even call it a regular cemetery. It's just a small plot of land with maybe 100 tombstones at most. The tombstone's very archaic looking, and any time we'd pass, there would be no signs of anyone having come to visit within the last decade. The site probably dated back centuries, and it had this super creepy vibe to it because it was closed off by a gothic metal fence, and it was surrounded by woods on two sides, the road on one, and some old abandoned building on the other. Everything about it just gave scary vibes. It took a little persuading, but Sean managed to get me to want to check it out too. Ironically, it was a very cloudy, wettish kind of day. I guess conveniently adding to the mood. Sean pulled up his Honda to the side of the road. I told him to pull up more so it wasn't obvious. This was a low traffic road so it would look kind of suspicious. He pulled up a few hundred feet down the road, and we got out and cut through the woods so that any potential passing traffic wouldn't see us entering the little cemetery. Hopping the fence in the woods was easy. It was maybe a three or four foot fence. Sean kind of took the lead on this since it was mainly his venture. He led us through the eerie little plot of land, and we looked at the archaic tombstones. They all seemed to be from the 19th century. The writing on some of them was illegible at that point. I know it sounds super dumb and cliche, but I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched constantly. I started looking around the surrounding woods. I told Sean how creepy this was. I know, he replied. Still, with the feeling of being watched, I looked at the abandoned building next to the cemetery, at one of the windows. For a brief moment, I knew I saw someone standing at the window, even through the fog, smudge, and dirt on the glass, but they casually either ducked or walked away from the window. I told Sean we were being watched by someone in that building, and he turned to look at it as well. 
Then he went to look for the entrance to it. I told him don't. I said we should just leave before we get in trouble. I stayed still by the tombstone he was looking at while he walked around the building. And then he found a way in. He called me over, but I stayed put. Then I heard some loud kind of crack. So I looked in that direction, and there was this older man, probably around 55. Gray hair, had on a black raincoat, I believe he was wearing jeans, and he had a mustache. But that's all I really got of him. Then he opened his mouth and screamed. Not just yelled, he screamed, get out. He screamed it so loud, I thought I saw birds fly away from being startled. And just like that, I started to feel lightheaded, and suddenly everything went dark. The next thing I remember was waking up to being dragged in the woods. I freaked out, thinking I was being kidnapped. But when I turned and got up, I saw it was just Sean. Sean was freaking out about something. He told me to follow him and run back to the car, so I didn't ask questions. As we ran through the woods, I heard something close behind me, and when I turned, I realized we were being followed by someone, so I ran even faster. We got to his Honda, and he basically put it in drive before the car even had a chance to fully start. When Sean was inside that abandoned building, he found a sigil of Baphomet painted on the wood floor, which is basically the sign of Satan. Around it were a bunch of freaky dolls with buttons for eyes. He didn't get to see anything else in the building because he heard the old man scream at me outside. He came running to find me passed out on the floor, and he saw the old man slowly walking over to me. He started to drag me away from the old man and into the woods. He actually literally picked me up and threw me over the fence to get me out. I quickly came back to consciousness, and that's when we ran. I had only fainted one time in my life, and it was at that moment. I don't know why I fainted, but it happening at a graveyard with some kind of satanic ritual building right next to it makes it that much stranger. My grandpa passed away a few years ago. I was always very close with him. This past July on his birthday, I paid him a visit at the cemetery. The cemetery he and my grandma chose to be buried at was about an hour drive from my apartment. My family lived closer, so they all went to his grave together. I had to go separately. It was a rainy, depressing day, and there's nothing worse than visiting a cemetery on a gloomy day. The gatekeeper of the gate asked for the plot number. I gave it to him and he let me in. It's a pretty big cemetery, and I'd only been there a couple other times. Not as the driver, though, so I had a hard time finding it. I didn't see many other people, if any, at the cemetery that day. I'm sure the weather had something to do with it. Eventually, I found his stone and parked my car in the grass to the side. I put some flowers down under his stone, stood there for a while with my eyes closed, and prayed. When I finished my prayer, I opened my eyes and looked up. There was an old man standing about five rows of graves down, but directly across from me, and he was looking right at me. I knew this man, though. It was my grandfather. But no, it couldn't be. I rubbed my eyes, and he was gone. Did I just have a spiritual moment? Or were my eyes and mind playing tricks on me? Either way, I got the chills, and I had goosebumps. I was quite honestly freaked out. I got back in my car, said, Love you, Grandpa, and drove off. I felt like I had a headache on my way home. Not sure why. I was the only car on Prospect Road, a quiet road with dense forest on either side. Commonly, there would be deer crossing here. As my car zipped down the road, I spotted someone on the side of the road coming up, which was odd. There were no sidewalks or a walking path on this road. I slowed down, and it couldn't be. It looked like my grandpa again. When I realized this, my heart dropped a thousand feet, and I swerved the car accidentally. I desperately tried to regain control and come to a stop. Luckily, my car didn't end up in a tree, rather just skidded out in the middle of the road until coming to a halt. I immediately looked back to where I saw him, and I saw a deer on the side of the road, looking at my car. My heart was literally racing. I was terrified. I was not well, and I needed to get home. 
made sure no cars were coming, and got back in my lane. I focused on the road as best I could given what I had just seen twice. I felt weird the rest of the day. Not sick, but something wasn't right with my head. I went to bed early after watching an episode of my show. I woke up at like 2 in the morning to my phone ringing. It was an unknown number. My heart started racing again. Any call at this hour couldn't be good news. I accepted the call and put the phone up to my ear. There was static on the other end. Finally, I said, hello? More static. But what I thought I heard next, I couldn't believe. Just briefly, for maybe half a second, I thought I heard my grandpa's voice over the static. I tried to say hello again, but I was too shook. Every part of my body was actually shaking. Then, the call cut to silence and ended. I called my phone provider the next day to trace the number. They couldn't. They didn't have enough data to trace it, apparently. Though I don't know if that was just bullshit or not. The events that took place that day and night were the scariest I have ever experienced. Do I think my dead grandpa was trying to contact me? I don't know. Because that sounds ridiculous. You'd think if you experienced something like this, you'd be so full of emotion and joy. But no, it still terrifies me. And I really still don't know what to think or how to feel about it. Whether it sounds ridiculous or not, this happened, and I wonder almost every other night, was that really my grandpa on the phone? My friends and I were very stupid when we were teenagers. I was like 17 or 18 when this happened. It was the month of October, and I wanted to do something scary in the spirit of Halloween. There's a small cemetery about 10 minutes from where I live, and when I was drunk with a couple friends, I said we should sneak into it. I'll make up some names for my friends, Ryan and Mike. We were at Ryan's house, he didn't drink ever. So when I came up with the idea, he was the one to drive us to the cemetery. Mike and I were really the ones leading this, Ryan was just along for the ride. But then again, he hadn't been drinking. Ryan parked in some parking lot across the street. It was a ghost town because it was past midnight at that point. We made sure no one was around to see us as we hopped the fence into the cemetery. It wasn't exactly pitch black out, but it was slightly hard to see more than 10 feet in front of us. So we were all using our iPhone flashlights. There didn't appear to be any night security in the cemetery, so we kind of dispersed from each other. Ryan seemed to be following Mike more closely. I could still see where they were because of their flashlights. I went off a little further on my own, and I decided I'd start taking a creepy video. So I started recording with the lights still on, of course. I recorded a bunch of old headstones and the general eerie vibe of the cemetery at night. I didn't see Mike and Ryan anymore, so I started to go look for them, still recording. I looked at my phone screen and froze. There was a woman dressed in a white gown or dress, I want to say, with long, gray-looking hair. She was looking down at the ground. I looked up from my phone screen to look at her in person, but she was gone. I started to back away. I looked back at my phone screen, and there she was again. Only now she was looking into the camera, or rather, looking at me. I looked up from the phone again and could not see her once more, so I looked back down at the screen again and there I could see her moving closer to me. I started to scream for Mike and Ryan as I sprinted away from that spot. I couldn't see their lights anywhere, and they weren't answering my screams. I had a feeling they were going to try to scare me, so I ran back for the fence of the cemetery to hop it and get out. I made it to Ryan's car and texted the two of them, saying they need to get out of the cemetery now. They met me at the car minutes later. We all sat in the car, and I showed them the video I took. They had the same horrified looks on their faces I did. Now that I was actually watching the whole video, I could see the moment the woman slowly lifted her head from looking at the ground to looking at me, and then she starts to move towards me. We could only see her moving for like a second or two before I start screaming in the video and running away. But the way she was moving, we could see no leg movement. It almost seemed as though she were floating to me. 
I have that video saved on my old iPhone 4S, but the stupid thing won't turn on. It gets stuck at the Apple logo. I don't want to reset that phone until I can get that video off of it somehow. My friends firmly believe the woman in the video was a real, living person who also happened to be in the cemetery that night. But me, having been the one to actually find her, and only being able to see her on my phone screen, well, let's just say I was never a believer in the paranormal until that night.